Let's take a look at standard CN.9. This standard states that we should be able to use the fundamental theorem of algebra to determine the number and potential types of solutions for polynomial functions. So in question one, the graph shows the polynomial function f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. Which of the following statements is true? The function has one real root with a multiplicity of 2 and one real root with a multiplicity of 1. So let's see. Negative 2 is one real root with a multiplicity. That means it's a double root. That's another word for that of 2. And then 1 over here is one real root, and it has a multiplicity of 1. Multiplicity means like how many of them are occurring. So one real root with a multiplicity of 2 makes sense because that's our negative 2. And then one real root with a multiplicity of 1 makes sense because that's 1. So I'm going with A, but let's look at why B, C, and D are not correct. B says the function has two real roots with a multiplicity of one and one imaginary root. One imaginary root is not possible because imaginary roots come in pairs. So this is not possible. So that is definitely wrong. C says the function has one real root with a multiplicity of one and two imaginary roots. But that's not true because two imaginary roots, we would not be able to see them touch the x-axis. So this function definitely doesn't, like C does not describe our function because we have three real roots on our graph. And then D says this function has three imaginary roots, which can't be true because that's an odd number of imaginary roots, which is never possible. So that is definitely wrong. All right, question two says, what are the number and types of zeros of the polynomial function f of x equals 3x to the fifth power plus 3x squared minus x minus 9. Before we type this in Desmos, let's look at what can't happen. Because we cannot, you can't have an odd number of imaginary roots. That never would happen. So you can't have an odd number of imaginary roots. Because imaginary roots come from the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So whenever you get your answer, you've always got a plus or minus with your complex roots. So say I have plus or minus 3i, or I have 2 plus or minus 5i, like there's always two of them. There's 3i and negative 3i, for example. There's 2 plus 5i and 2 minus 5i. Like, they never show up by themselves. There's always the plus and minus involved because they come from the quadratic formula. So, a is an option because we have one real and an even number of imaginary, and they add up to 5 total. So, that would be a possibility. B has one real and three imaginary, which is wrong for two reasons. You can't have an odd number of imaginary roots. And that only adds up to four roots total, so that would not make sense either. C says there's three real and one imaginary, which again can't happen because that's an odd number of imaginary, and those only add up to four total, so that's wrong. And then four real and one imaginary, well, that doesn't make sense because that's an odd number of imaginary, but at least it does add up to five, but it's still wrong because we can't have an odd number of imaginary roots. So A has to be right because of the options given. So we don't even actually have to type this one in to Desmos, but if you did type it in Desmos, you will see that you have one x-intercept and the rest you can't see. And then we always know there's the same number of roots as our highest exponent, which is our degree. So our degree was five, and that's the total number of roots that we were looking for. So that's why the ones that had only four total are definitely incorrect. All right, question number three says, a polynomial function f of x with real coefficients has a degree of five. So that means we have five roots. They go hand in hand. Which choice could describe the number and types of zeros? So again, use what we just talked about. We can't have an odd number of imaginary roots. So A is wrong because there's not going to be three of them. C is wrong because there's not going to be one of them. And D is wrong because there can't be five of them. So B would be the only right answer again, 
because you can only have an even number of imaginary roots and then this does total up to five. So that's also important to keep noting. Number four says, what is the lowest possible degree of the function graphed below? And what is another possible degree of this function? So we have one real root with a multiplicity of one at negative three. We have one real root at negative one. It's not a double root because it does not turn around right there and go back down. It keeps going through negative one. So there's one there, there's one there, and then there's a one root, but it has a multiplicity of two. So that counts as two roots when we're adding up the total number right here. So we'd have to have at least a degree of four. It cannot be lower than that. So three and zero are out and four would be the lowest possible degree. But then this is a follow-up question. What is another possible degree? Remember, you can have two imaginary roots, or you can have four, or you can have six. Like, any even number would be okay. So another possible degree would be the four real roots that we see on the graph. And we could have two imaginary roots. And so we could have a total of six. Or we could have four real, and we could have four imaginary so the total would be eight, we could have 10, we could have 12, like any even number would work above four, but it cannot be less than four because we have four real roots. So like three, two, one, and zero are all out. They don't work. All right, so that was the last question for this standard.